How am I supposed to follow that up? <laughs> uh, good evening. So, a little bit different situation. Um, I've been invited tonight to introduce someone who's very near and dear to my heart. Um, and that's probably because he was half of the person that gave birth to me. Um, <laughs> So um, I've, I've been in awe all night long, and that's because my dad, John, um, he hasn't really shared that part of his life with me until this point. I've always known he's been very much into the running community, and it's had a very big impact on my life personally. Um, <laughs> growing up, my pretty much my memories of maybe from one to five years old has always been surrounded by running and being around all of his students that he helped coach and uh, be successful in their lives. And that's always inspired me. Um, one story that's kind of always stuck out in my mind is I remember, was it after the state championship? Um, something like that with Highland Ridge High School. <laughs> and again, I was maybe about one to three years old. Um, I remember <laughs> in front of his entire team, I would stand up and I pull my pants down and I peed on the fire. And <laughs> And uh, the importance behind that is just, just that it, it always surrounded around running and athletics and, and everything like that. And um, beyond being ju just an athlete, um, he's inspired me and helped me throughout my life in insurmountable amount of ways. Um, from coaching, um, we're now business partners, and I know the impact he has had for, for so many people. And he, he has really been a, a defining figure in my life. And um, it's been, like I said, it's been phenomenal to really hear about all the stories and everything that he has, has had throughout this, this university and the impact he has had on them. And I, I just wish him all the best and I really hope that um, he's proud of this because I'm very proud of him and I just really like him to know and understand that. And I hope that um, people can just really use him as an example for how you should live your life and how you should always chase your dreams and really work hard and that it can make a difference. Um, so much anymore, we are caught up in trying to play the victims type of attitude when really more so we should look up to athletes and how you should really try and work for and try to earn what you, what you really want and really try to go out and chase your dreams. So it's really, it's, it's my pleasure to introduce and welcome into the Metro State Hall of Fame tonight. Um, John Lees. <laughs> this is actually pretty heavy. I want to thank Tyson, my son, for uh, introducing me, and I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight, and uh, all, all these great athletes that are here, and all these great athletes that have been through Metro State. Uh, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie and I, and Todd, who's with us tonight, started off as a ragtag bunch coached by Brian Jansen. I think Charlie was actually the only one of us that actually qualified for the state meet when we started this team. We started with $850 a year as our athletic budget. Yeah, think about that. We would put on bingo nights. Okay, if ever, this was in the 80s. If you've ever been to a bingo night in the 80s, you could not see because the smoke was so thick. So you had all these athletes going into bingo nights and coming out where we couldn't see, we couldn't for days, we'd cough because of all the cigarette smoke that were in these bingo nights. But that's what we had to do and to raise money for our program. Um, Coach Jansen uh, did such a phenomenal job of motivating us to, to excel. And as Tyson said, it was one of those things where we knew that hard work would get us somewhere. And that's what we did. We worked hard. And we worked really hard. Uh, Coach Vigil down at Adams State was kind of our role model uh, and following his teams. And Adams State has been in the top five teams, NAIA and Division II, for the last 40 years. And that's the teams we emulated. And that's why we actually did start to excel here. I've got 
two stories I want to tell you. One was when I first realized that I was going to be an okay distance runner. It was down at the University of Southern Colorado. And Pat Porter, who at that time, I think he had actually graduated from Adam State and he was running for Athletics West, which was a professional organization. And Brett Hyde from Air Force Academy, these guys were, fin and another All-American national champion, phenomenal runners. And we're taking off at USC and we're in the mile and I'm running with these two guys. And they're kind of looking at me going, who the heck are you? And we come around, we go through two miles. And Pat Porter, Pat Porter was about 6'2", Brett Hyde was about six foot. And I'm about five foot. <clears throat> and Pat looks down at me and he goes, Lisey, what are you doing here? And I look up at Pat and I go, running. And I ended up about fifth at that, at that race, but that's when I knew that the training that Coach Jansen had put us through got us to where we were at. And that was, that was so important to try to get that confidence. Second story I have for you is I was up at University of Northern Colorado. And I just got done running the 5,000 meters. And I was tired, but Coach Jansen comes up to me and he goes, John, um, one of our guys in the 4 by 400 meter relay is, is not doing too well. And so can you run? And I go, yeah, I just got done, coach. What? Okay, well, have you run anchor. And it's against the Air Force Academy and UNC and a couple other schools. So I get up to the line, and when my, when my leg comes up, fourth leg, and I look over, and here's this guy from the Air Force Academy, and I'm kind of, I think I know this guy, but I, 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 I have about a 10 meter lead. These other guys, our other teammates are pretty good. And I get the baton, I get about 10 meters, and all of a sudden this Air Force guy has 10 meters on me. And it's like, okay. Okay, he's going out too fast. I'll, I'll come around the turn and I'll, I'll, I'll move on him. I come around the turn, he's already up at the next turn. Uh, when I got done with the race, I thought, man, I must have ran really slow. And I'd run like 52, 53 second quarter, which was okay. That gentleman was Alonzo Babers. He was the gold medalist in the Olympics that year. <laughs> okay. But those were things, those are stories that we have from our time running here. We, like I said, we were a bunch of ragtag runners. None of us were very good, but we worked hard. And that's the thing you can do. You go out and you work hard, you start to believe in yourself, and you can be successful. You know, Charlie and I, um, had successful careers after we got out of college in athletics. And that stemmed from us learning what we learned here at Metro. And I really appreciate the opportunity that I had here. And it's, it's taken me off into later life where I had some very successful cross country track teams at Highland Ranch High School when I was coaching there. And it's just conveying to those kids that it's not going to be given to you. If you want to go out and you want to work hard, you can achieve what you want to achieve. So thank you very much. God bless.